should be a brook trout, at least one in this hole. Just lost that one there. Let's see if he comes back. I made contact with him, so I doubt it. Oh, got his buddy though, he's better. Woohoo! Yeah, let's go! That's a good one, man. Oh, it's a good one. Here in Virginia, we've got the native brook trout. And what I wanted to do today was just show you all just five tips and tricks for how to catch brook trout on the fly. I'm gonna let this baby go and we'll talk a little bit about just all kinds of different tactics. So we're gonna talk about small stream tactics today. We're gonna talk about conservation. We're gonna talk about what flies to use, what gear works for them best. And then last but not least, uh, we're gonna talk about just enjoying the process of being out here on these streams. So stay tuned and I'm gonna cover all that for you guys today. Thanks for watching Geek on the Water. My name is Jacob Nixon. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you after this. On the subject of tip number one, small river tactics, you want to consider what you're wearing. So if you look right now what I'm wearing here, I've got on just some very muted colors, light brown, gray. My hat has a little bit of neon green in it, but not enough, I think, to stand out. Um, if you look at what Grant's wearing today, um, he's got on an olive kind of green and some gray waders there. So nothing too bright. And what we're trying to do right now is sneak up Stay crouched like we normally do. Anytime you're brook trout fishing, you want to stay out of sight of the fish, which goes right in line with the idea of not being with bright colors on, easily seen. Right, let's do a roll cast here. So the roll cast will keep you out of trouble a lot of times. That's a good one. I'm up in the soft water, right near the edge. That's where I want to be. Couple casts up in there before I give up on these fish. This lightweight line on this fiberglass rod makes roll casting real, real pleasant. Can you do a bone arrow again? Yeah. So Grant's going to hold the bone arrow, holding a fly back here, and then he's got his rod bent and he releases it. Grant made a good point that you should always grab the bend of the hook. If you grab that point, you're going to get stabbed. Tip number two, conservation. So you really want to take good care of these fish because they are native. Here in Virginia, um, they've been around for a long time. This is the southern strain of the brook trout. And one of the best ways to take good care of these fish is to actually keep your hands wet before you land them. Uh, another good way is to use a net. So you'll see today I'm, I've got a net here. Grant's got a net. Yeah, I get that you don't always have a chance to land a fish with a net, but in this case, we're here and prepared to take care of the fish as best we can. So Grant tied on a new hook here and it's matching down to barb so it stays barbless for these fish. That's a really good conservation tip for these fish. A little hook with a barb on it can really do some damage. Just keep in mind that the idea is keep your hands wet, keep the fish wet as much as you can. Um, you'll notice we're doing some pretty quick releases. Um, some people don't even touch the fish at all and I absolutely applaud that. Another important fact about brook trout is their spawning period. It typically runs from near the end of October through November and then those fish 
eggs and everything need time to kind of rest and hatch and everything and settle. So we don't want to be walking on these small streams, or what they call the reds. Don't tread on the red is a little movement that you'll see online if you were to Google it. But the idea is just let these fish kind of spawn, get a chance to reproduce, stay away from them. So we don't recommend fishing for them anywhere between late October uh, to January. That's here in Virginia. It might be different a little bit other waters, but here in Virginia, that's kind of our status quo. You ready for a bonus tip? Pack and lunch. Tuna. Doesn't spoil. Smells terrible. <laughs> Might attract bears. I don't know. But delicious. Oh my gosh. Mm. Want some? There you go, bro. Sharing is caring. It can be fun. So while we're sitting here next to this beautiful stream right here, I'm going to talk about tip number three. Don't just always focus right on that water. Yes, the fish are beautiful. Yes, the fish are why I'm here. But just take a moment, take it all in, look around, and I think you'll find the whole experience in general just easier to appreciate. You are in the beauty that is nature. You got to take care of them. And you got to go to where they are to really appreciate the kind of history and just the beauty of them. And of course, when you get them in your hands, it's one of the most beautiful fish you'll ever see. I'm back in the studio at my house because the wind noise started picking up real bad on the mics. And as you might have noticed there on tip number three, the audio got a little bit shaky. So I decided to come back in here and film tip number four and tip number five in the studio. No worries though, I'm still going to use footage that we got out there on the water to kind of show you everything I'm talking about. But I also, since we have the studio, I'm going to take advantage of that and I'll pull you over here to the table and show you the flies I'm talking about and what I recommend as far as flies for brook trout. Alright, let's go check it out. You got some dry flies here, some stimulators, some, some parachute style kind of flies. Something that's going to be visible, something that's going to be easy for you to see on the water and easy for the trout of course to find. If you're going to go for some bigger brook trout and you think you're going to run into them, you might want to use a streamer. Just about any color should do, but a woolly bugger is all you're going to probably need for them. And then last but not least, just basic nymphs. Um, anything in the size 16 to 12 kind of size range, but you can downsize all the way to 20, size 20 midges. You can get some ants patterns in there. So these are just a variety of flies that I would take out with me. Very good. So this one right here is a soft tackle that Grant just tied on. And so we're done with the flies. Let's move on to tip number five. If you've stuck around for this last and final tip, the fifth tip, it's a basic one. It's gear. It's real easy. But I want to take a quick second to encourage you, um, if you're interested at all in knowing more about brook trout, this is just a very basic introduction to what I recommend. Please go ahead and comment below and we'll go ahead and talk more about what you think about is best approaches for brook trout, some better things, maybe some mistakes that I made even in this video. I have no problem. I know I'm not an expert angler. There are a lot of opinions on certain things in the gear selection, but I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to talk to you about the reel, the rod, and the line. The rest of it, I think you can figure out on your own. But once again, if you have more questions about that, hit the comment section below and I'll answer some of those for you. You're talking about gear with brook trout. You're not going to be thinking about anything big, of course. You're going to be looking in the two to three weight range. This is a, a two to three weight fly reel, but the reel is really not going to matter because you're not going to be fighting these fish on the reel. So don't worry too much about that. Just make sure you got something light that'll go on a lightweight rod because what I'm going to recommend is fiberglass rods, um, usually in about the two to three weight range also. So what I use for my rod is going to be this Echo Glass three weight. Um, it runs actually six foot nine. I like a shorter rod approach, but not super short. So six nine is about as short as I'll go. And mine comes in three pieces, so it's actually great for traveling, which is good when you're hiking up a long trail or something like that. Um, if you want to bring the tube, you can. But realistically, a lot of times I'll just throw these three in my hands and then hike up on those trails and build the rod when I get up there. There's going to be some people that like a longer rod, and I don't disagree with that either. It kind of gives you more line control in certain pockets. But personally for me, if I'm going brookie fishing, there's just something about fishing a smaller, shorter rod for me that I enjoy more. I'm going to prefer something in the six foot nine, seven and a half foot range. No more tips for brook trout today. 
I look forward to making some more brick shop videos down the road. But as, this, as far as this video goes, it's done. It's a wrap. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching.